Welcome along to the Vanarama National League Highlight Show. As we enter September, the season continues to take shape as fans and players alike start to dream of success. Over the next half an hour, we'll bring you all the thrills and spills of another weekend in football's fifth tier. Coming up... Sutton are knocked off the top as Maidenhead spring a surprise. Dagenham and Redbridge extend their unbeaten run. Leighton Orient hit four against managerless Geisley. It may have been Premier League transfers that were making the headlines this week, but Dave Tarpey's move to League Two side Barnet was the big deadline day news in the National League. Maidenhead's talisman scored 44 league goals last season for the Magpies as they won the National League South and he carried that form on with seven goals this term. Time then for the others to step up and fill the void, especially if they were going to knock Sutton off their perch and maintain their unbeaten record on the road. Old Doswell's side sat two points clear at the top of the table. A fairly tight affair was being played out in the first ever league meeting between the sides. Harry Pritchard's effort rolling agonisingly close to the line was the nearest either side came to an opening goal. It wasn't until deep into the second half that Maidenhead broke the deadlock, but it was worth the wait for Ryan Upward, who scored his first goal at this level to put Alan Devonshire's side ahead. Sutton had an equaliser in sight when Craig Dundas beat goalkeeper Carl Pentney to a through ball, only for Alan Massey to come to his rescue. With eight minutes of injury time to add on, there was enough on the clock for another goal and it was Maidenhead's Harold Odometti who put the game out of sight. A second straight home defeat sees Sutton slip down the table as the Magpies snatch another three points. Yeah, well beaten today um, by a well-organised side, uh, no complaints. I thought that they did the, the dirty side of the game a lot, lot better than us. Yeah, it's quite even first half and I thought we dominated second half, so... Um... I thought it was a deserved result. Mm. It's our first clean sheet, so I'm pleased with that. And uh, we move on and, uh, to Halifax next week. And with Dave Tarpey having joined Barnes on Thursday night, were you worried at all about the effect of that? Listen, it happens. We want them to push on. and you know, He's gone to a league club and uh, we want him to do well. He's done great for us, uh, but it gives other people a chance. So. Dagenham and Redbridge went into a home clash with Gateshead as the league's top scorers. They also have in charge the August Manager of the Month, John Still. A September challenge for the Daggers boss will be making up for the goals provided by Oliver Hawkins, who was this week sold to Portsmouth. Early on, after Morgan Ferrier was denied by Dan Hamford, Joe White capitalised from close range. The 18-year-old only agreed a new contract on Thursday. Gates had mixed up their formation in the first half to find a way back into the match. A Luke Hannon free kick was deflected in by Kevin Locko. Own goal, one all. With moments to go before the break, the home side were awarded a penalty when Ferrier was fouled in the box by Neil Byrne. Ferrier took it, but missed the target. And there wasn't much luck when he eventually got a second chance from the rebound. Ferrier was proving to be difficult for the Gateshead defence, still looking for that first. He was denied this time on the line by sliding captain Byrne. There were 10 minutes to go and another opportunity for Ferrier to finally get on the score sheet and the former Boreham Woodman took it this time 2-1 to Dagenham. Before time was up at the Chigwell Construction Stadium, Stills men put distance between themselves and Gateshead. Elliot Roman caught the away side out on the break. Finding the net for his team for the first time, Dagenham climb up to top spot in the National League. They've scored 19 times in eight games. We missed a penalty. We had two cleared off the line. And we've got another couple of goals. So I thought it was first class performance. I'm really, really pleased with, with, with our endeavour and their quality. You must be pleased with your side start to the season. Um, what are your thoughts on recently receiving the Manager of the Month award? We're a tight knit team off the pitch. Um, staff are, are terrific, so uh, it's an award that goes to the manager, but really it's an award that goes to everyone that's contributed to, to our start, which is a, a first class start. For the third successive week, there was another managerial casualty in the National League as Geisley parted company with Adam Lockwood. After defeat in front of the BT Sport cameras at Halifax last weekend and a bank holiday loss at fellow strugglers Hartlepool, Geisley felt it was time for a change. 
With just one win to their name, the Lions sat in the bottom four and they travelled to Leighton Orient in hope of better fortunes, despite not having a manager in place for the away trip. Meanwhile, Steve Davis was adding to his roster, bringing striker Matt Harold to his hometown club. Geisley started to put their difficult week behind them when Coyote Adegeye surprised the host when he was on side to score the club's first away goal this season. But their joy was short-lived as the O's won two penalties within minutes of each other. Both won by David Mooney, the first courtesy of a handball by Ashley Palmer. The spot kicking duty was given to Macaulay Bond, who confidently took away the first to cancel out Geisley's lead. The striker was called upon again when Mooney went down on the edge of the box. Marcus Williams, the offender this time. Joe Green went the right way, but it was deja vu for Bonn, who repeated the move to put Leighton Orient ahead, 2-1 at half-time. The host continued to dominate possession after the break, but with a change came another goal. Harold, just minutes into his debut with their third. Bonn then wrapped up a memorable afternoon, racing through and beating Green again to complete his first league hat-trick and the first by any O's player in the league at the Matchroom Stadium since 2006. He took the match ball home as his side celebrated back-to-back -back victories, much to the delight of their manager. It was an excellent uh, performance in the end. You know, we had to work hard for it. Obviously going a goal down as well. We had to show a little bit of character to get back in it. And a couple. Amazing for all the football we did play, uh, the way the two goals came about to get us back in the game. It was totally different to what we'd have expected. So. That was nice going into the half time, 2 1 up from being one down very quickly. And uh, I thought we, we built on that second half um, and fully deserve what we, what we got in here. Bromley went to a team sitting fourth in the National League, Wrexham's highest position in the division for 19 months. Bromley had lost their last two. Neil Smith's men were to get an opportunity on the half hour mark to take the lead. A James Jennings handball meant a penalty for Bromley. Frankie Raymond's spot kick was denied by Christian Dibble. He's the son of ex-Wrexham and Wales goalkeeper Andy. Wrexham finally made their dominance at the racecourse ground count a minute after half-time. A Jennings delivery was turned in by Natumba Masanka, 1-0. Wrexham were keen to ensure for the first time this season they won a match by more than a goal. Once again, Dean Keats Burnley Loney delivered, beating David Gregory to seal maximum points. Wrexham move up the league again to third, their highest place since September 2015. I thought second half they were, uh, they were a lot better, we played more on the front four, we played uh, the pass team was a lot crisper and a lot more fluent to create, create chances, I thought first half we were, we were a bit laboured. Disappointing because I don't think it was a 2-0 scoreline, if I've got to be brutally honest, especially the first half, but you know, when with a club like Wrexham, you know, got good players, they, take, they, they took their chances today. Four defeats in six games has served as a difficult start for Solihull Moors, but they ended August with some good news when keeper Nathan Vaughan collected the Player of the Month award following his unique goal last weekend. He was hoping to help his side bounce back from defeat against Tranmere last time out as they travelled to the EBB. Aldershot had been the league's early pace setters, helped largely by Shamir Fenelon. He was on form again to score his fourth of the season inside the opening ten minutes, only to pull up with a hamstring injury in the process. Vaughan may have won his accolade for scoring, but he had to demonstrate his skill between the sticks, denying Bobby Joe Taylor before Jake Gallagher's efforts was blocked in the final few minutes. The single goal bittersweet for Fenelon in the end, but Aldershot get back to winning ways with their first victory in five. Despite the injury crisis, assistant manager James Rowe says there's plenty to be positive about. What a performance. Two 17-year-olds coming on, making their debuts. I uh, thought the spirit from the sending off at Eastleigh has been outstanding and um, yeah, to get two clean sheets on those two games, very good. Unbeaten at home, Barrow were after a first win in five matches taking on Boreham Wood. Marcus Bignot was installed this week as assistant to Mickey Moore, even though Bignot was in charge of Moore at Grimsby and Solihull Moors. Barrow took charge of this clash after only three minutes. Bedsente Gomis got the better of Boreham Wood keeper Grant Smith to make it 1-0. For Gomis, it was his first goal since August last year. With not long to go before the end of the first half, Moore's men broke away rapidly from a Boreham Wood free kick, resulting in former Tottenham Academy boy Jack Bathroom putting the ball past Smith. 
In a fixture where all key moments happened in the first 45, Barrow's keeper Stuart Moore made a mistake that was pounced on by Bruno Andrade. He scored six goals already during the current campaign. A lunge from Alex Harvey on Tom Champion meant that the home team had to play almost 50 minutes with 10 men. Harvey surely can't have too many complaints about the red card. From the resulting free kick, Boreham Wood and Angelo Balanta had the chance to equalise, denied by the bar. Barrow secure that first win in five and stay unbeaten. I thought it was a good performance and it's nice when you get a good performance, you get a result as well, because sometimes you don't get both. Coming up after the break, Tranmere's troubles continue at Prenton Park. Halifax go four unbeaten as Tom Denton shines. And we'll bring you our best goals from last month. Welcome back to the Vanarama National League Highlight Show. 210 goals were scored in August. So before we get back to the action, here's our top five from last month. Hopeful's Tranmere were under increased pressure for a result as they welcomed Dover Athletic to Prenton Park. Mickey Mellon's team had to play catch-up against a Dover side without a win in three. Watching this for us were the two Adams, Virgo and Somerton. Dover have to get back in position here, forward towards Andy Cook. He has Connor Essen for attention. Harris. And Hughes is calling for it, he's in acres of space, he's got it too, what a chance! Good save. Fine stop by Mitch Walker, but how on earth was he afforded so much space there? Decent save there for Mitch Walker, comfortable height. Cross is floated in towards Cook! And maybe a second opportunity, it was a good stop, wasn't it, by Mitch Walker. Well, he's been excellent all afternoon, Mitch Walker. Time and time again, saves have come in. It's a brilliant header down. Swung in by Wrighthouse, there's loads of them running onto that. And it's just wide, so, so close to an opening goal for Tranmere Rovers. Well, this is a ball of real quality from Liam Wrighthouse. Mitch Walker, he's stuck on his line, he can't come out and get that. But he'd be disappointed with that one, James Norwood. For Zachary. Searching cross and a good header, and off the bar. Dover so close to going in front. Dover really come into the game, second half really, really well. Duggan, he just switches off that split second. Mr. Manley just does everything right. Rises early, Davis is beating, all ends up. Norwood, Buxton's in the area, Ridehouse is in the area. Norwood felt he was fouled on the edge of the area. There is for Zachary. Gets it clear up to show Silva. Tasley. Pinnock has taken up some good positions, found space in these sort of areas. Pinnock's cross towards Bird at the back post, and Brundle was hoping for the knockdown. On the referee, it's pointed to the spot. It's a penalty to Dover Athletic. Oh, Richie Sutton is the player protesting here to the referee. It's one of these ones where you think that you've got a little bit more time on the ball than what you have done. And he just goes and clears it. Bird comes in. 
it is a penalty. We'll just see when he clears it there. Clearly see that he takes the back of his leg out. Ryan Bird. And he beats Scott Davis. It's Bird. It's 1-0 to Dover. Bird's just gone for complete power. That time of the game, you can't afford to take any chances to try and outthink the goalkeeper. Well, this was 26 seconds before that penalty was given at the other end of the pitch. Should Tranmere have had a free kick there? It's a penalty. In my opinion, that is a penalty there. Jennings. A right out could be in here. And it's saved and cleared off the line. Essen was there in the nick of time for Dover. Right house so close. Oh, what a ball this is from James Norwood. Josh Pasley just switches off, doesn't he? Mitch Walker to the rescue again. And then Connor Essen clears it off the line. It's just one of those days for Tramir, isn't it? We're looking to attack. Uh, but to, but today, you know, the other side we're attacking and it's no, we're not just all about attack. You know, if you've got to defend, uh, everyone will work hard for the team and the plan worked. Has the lad played the ball or has he blocked my player clearing it? Who's in control of the ball there? That would be the big question I would ask. If, if the lad touches the ball and then my player wipes him out, then I'm seeing a penalty there. But he's going to go and clear the ball and the lad puts his leg across him and blocks him from kicking the ball. So that's where I'm confused about that one. Unbeaten in three matches, Halifax hosted Fylde at the Shea. This was a clash in National League North last season, a clash that was won twice by the visitors. Fylde, who had scored in all seven games during the current campaign in England's fifth tier, almost went in front this time in the first half. Danny Rowe did the hard work passing two Halifax defenders, but couldn't keep his shot down. It took until 10 minutes into the second half for the deadlock to be broken. Filed Simon Grand excellently picked out Danny Rowe, who then excellently chipped on rushing Sam Johnson. All of Rowe's three goals this season have come away from home. After conceding for the first time in almost six hours, Halifax were determined to answer back immediately. After a Josh McDonald cross met Adam Morgan and the woodwork, Tom Denton found the net one all, game on. With just over 10 minutes to go, the comeback from the home team was complete. McDonald was again involved and Denton, he now has three goals this season. In added time, Fylde's day didn't get any better after speaking with one of his assistants. Referee Glenn Hart sent off Matthew Blinkhorn for an off-the-ball incident and alleged stamp. 2-1 it finished, Halifax takes seven points in seven days. Only two points separated Macclesfield and Woking as the two sides lined up against each other at Los Rose. The bank holiday had returned maximum points for the hosts, but there was a warning from Anthony Limbrick that his cards were on the up. Despite that, it was Macclesfield who dealt the first blow. Elliot Durrell rising highest to head home his first for the Silkman since joining from neighbouring rivals Chester. Time for the visitors to respond and they did less than 10 minutes later. Jason Banton may have been helped by a deflection and a mistake from keeper Shwan Jalal, but he happily claimed his first goal in two years to level things. Jalal had to be alert as the visitors pushed for a second, producing a brilliant triple save to somewhat redeem himself, although clearly frustrated at the increasing attack that his goal was coming under. Woking's persistence paid off, as did Joe Ward's, and there was nothing Jalal could do about this one. The winger with an expert finish off the post to put them ahead. That's two in two for the former Lincoln City man. A chance for Macclesfield to square things up presented itself just before the break and it was Woking keeper Nathan Baxter in the thick of the action this time, leaving an open goal for Danny Whittaker to aim at. Nathan Ralph with a superb block on the line. Ten minutes after the break and Whittaker was out of the blocks and in on goal again. This time he was denied by the upright. Macclesfield were made to pay for their missed opportunities. Ine Effiong was a threat all afternoon. He thrashed his shot past Jalal to secure the away win just before the final whistle. That's seven goals in two games for Woking, who become the first side to beat the Silkmen on home turf.
A first meeting between Hartley Paul and Maidstone, the visitors made the long journey to Victoria Road unbeaten in three. Hartley Paul won for the first time this season on Monday, winning 1 0 at Geisley. In front of 4,000 supporters, Craig Harrison's men had an early Lewis Hawkins corner. After Maidstone's failed attempts to clear, Hartlepool defender Keith Watson found the net. His first goal for the club, 1-0. After a quiet start to the second half from the home team, Nicky Devedick sent a delivery into the Maidstone box. It was headed past Lee Wargan by Jonathan Franks. Two goals now for him in a week and Hartlepool's advantage doubled. Maidstone could and should have pulled a goal back immediately when Joe Piggott's header from Stuart Lewis's cross brought a great one-handed save from Scott Loach. Franks then turned provider in the northeast. Brilliant work in the corner, beating two defenders was followed up by an assist for Connor Simpson. He's been compared by some Hartlepool fans to Andy Carroll. There was time for one last goal, a consolation for the away team. It was scored by former Hull City forward Johan de Horst, a first of his career. Hartlepool get the three points. It's two wins in a week as the National League new boys move out of the relegation zone. Instead of facing Eastley this weekend, Sam Magri found himself lining up against England. Magri represented the three Lions at youth level, playing alongside Raheem Sterling and Nathaniel Shalabar, but he now represents Malta. The Ebbs Fleet defender was flying the National League flag on international duty. He was unable to help avoid a 4-0 defeat. It was down to his teammates to break a cycle of five successive draws, but it was the visitors who got off the mark inside 20 minutes. James Constable opening his account with his first goal in seven months. A stunning free kick levelled things going into the break. Jack Powell on the score sheet for the second time this season. You have to go all the way back to Boxing Day to find the last time Ebb's fleet were beaten in the league. And they look to be heading for only their second win this season when Danny Kedwell scrambled in across to put them in front. But it wasn't to be. With 10 minutes to go, Rita Johnson's long-range effort was deflected in by Craig McAllister. Another share of the spoils means the two sides have now drawn 12 matches between them. A match-up between two teams in awful form at present in the National League. Torquay had lost their last six. Chester had won only once in 13. 12 minutes in, an opening goal in Devon. A Torquay cross was only cleared as far as George Dowling and he spectacularly found the net a debut goal for the 18-year-old who's on loan from Bristol City. Moments later at the other end, Chester defender John McComb was denied by the post. After the interval, a sensational volley was unleashed into the top corner by James Gray, but agonisingly for him, the goal was ruled out. This followed a shove by Sean McGinty on Chester's Craig Mann in the build-up. Sam Perkis, the referee, awarded Chester a free kick. John McCarthy had sent on Tom Shaw in the second half, and sure enough, it proved decisive. The sub headed across for Ross Hanna to stylishly equalise in added time. Torquay are the only club in the National League yet to win a match this season. So after eight matches, unbeaten Dagenham and Redbridge lead the way in the National League. A second straight home defeat for Sutton sees them drop down to fourth, while wins for Leighton Orient and Wrexham moves them into the promotion picture. In the other half of the table, Torquay remain rooted to the bottom. Tranmere's woes continued as defeat against Dover puts them just two points clear of the bottom four. But there was better news for Hartlepool fans as their second consecutive win moves them out of the relegation places. We'll have more live Vanarama National League action in a couple of weeks on BT Sport as Inform Leighton Orient take on Hartlepool United at the Matchroom Stadium. You can see that one live on BT Sport 1 and on our 4K UHD channel from midday on Saturday the 16th of September. We'll leave you with our Player of the Week, Macaulay Bond. His hat-trick took him to the top of the National League goal-scoring charts and put Leighton Orient in the mix at the top of the table. We'll see you again next time.